Hello everyone, it's Nikki Backer L. D'Angelo here for another Five for the Community Manager. I'm going to be talking to Ben Lesnick in just a little bit. Here I am in my hangar, and uh, this obviously doesn't depict all the ships that I have. I don't know what that little bit of stuttering in the beginning was. But I'm coming to a decision after seeing the images of the Carrick, which maybe I'll overlay here, maybe not. Maybe I'll just wait until Friday for you to see them. But I'm trying to come to a decision. Because there's so much being changed on this ship over here, because this ship costs so much for what it actually does. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I really, 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 really want a Carrick. And the Redeemer, although I fully support Four Horsemen and every one of the other contestants and their designs, I'm just not going... You know, it's a hard decision because I really like the Redeemer, but it's going to be melted on Friday, and I'm going to be purchasing the Carrick. And obviously it's because the Carrick is that one ship that I've really been waiting for for a long time. The exploration part of the game is something that definitely 100% it interests me the most. And I've got my LX, and I will have a 315P, and I will have a Dur, I will have the Aquila, and I will have the Carrick. I will have all four of the different exploration vessels by the time the game goes live. Of course, what I've said in the past is that a lot of ships I get, I get so I can do this. So I can walk around a ship and show it off to you. But I think that's going to be alleviated soon. I think that I'll be able to get a press account from CIG now that they're going to be offering them to people like myself and other YouTubers that are consistent with the content they put up. So today I got a chance to talk to Ben, and before we go and do that, and I stop my cat from scratching the post over here, sorry about that noise folks, I just want to say one thing. I'm pretty, um, pretty disappointed with the way that the forums have been going the last couple of days or last week. They started this sale, and they started offering things like the Arc Light 2 um, pistol, the MISC environmental coat for the freelancer, the, uh, well, UEE military envi environmental coat, and the orange race suit. And I asked Ben a couple of questions about that. But come on, people, take a step back, all right? This game needs to get made. And one of the pieces that I pulled out of the PC Magazine article, which, of course, was incorrect, just like I thought, about them investing $100 million of their own money, they actually stated that they were going to be investing $100 million by the time the game goes live of our money. So with that correction made, let's pull out of the air what they said in the magazine article. And that was that the ship prices were determined pr kind of haphazardly. They put out the pledges and assigned a certain ship to each pledge. When they continued the crowdfunding campaign... They indiscriminately just called whatever the pledge levels were the price of the ships. And that's how we got here. And now those of you that are insistent upon making this a, uh, an, an endeavor to keep your stuff away from everybody are actually making the ship prices climb. And I think that that's good for CIG making money, but it's bad for attracting new people to the game. And... I'll get into that with my next State of the Game on Monday, but oh, come on, guys. Lighten up a little bit. When they're putting out an anniversary sale, it's a one-week sale. Not everybody's going to buy it because not everybody's going to spend $150 on ones and zeros that look like a ship and can't resell, can't touch, can't sit inside it for real. So don't be scared when they put things up like a ship that you thought wasn't going to be up there for less money or a or a spacesuit that is similar to the one that they put out in a special package like the Lightspeed package. And Ben does clarify that a little bit in this next part of the video. Sorry about me being a little bit raging. I'm not really raging today. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope each and every one of you are thankful for the wonderful things that have happened in your life. I'm thankful for all of you that listen to me, that have donated or become patrons that comment and like my videos. Thank you so very much. I'm very grateful to you. And I'm grateful that CIG gives me as, as much access, well, gives us, the YouTube and podcasting community, as much access as they do to them. With that said, here's the next uh, part of the video, a interview with Ben Lesnick, my next Five for the CM. 
Hello everyone, it's Nikki Becker D'Angelo here for another five for the CM. The CM being Ben Lesnick, who is probably one of the most vocal and uh, approachable people I've ever met in the gaming industry. Ben, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you very much. I, I didn't know I was approachable. That's great. You're yeah, welcome on. You are always and always open and honest and ready to answer questions, regardless. Where, and this is not Ben's statement. This is mine. Regardless of one of some of those, uh, well, we're just going to say those backers say in the forums sometimes. Um, well, you had a really big week, and I'm going to let you stay away from answering any of those questions, but it seems like a lot of people were uh, a little bit boisterous about things that were going on with sales and stuff. So the first question I'm going to ask you is going to be something from one of my viewers, and it's that there are these different things, like the arc light pistol, like the um, jacket that you get with the freelancer, and like the racing suit that you get with the, uh, well, two different racing suits, right? The red racing suit with the light speed package, which is for older backers like myself, or the Origin space suit, which is now up in the um, available to purchase. I think it's for 5 or $10. Could That's you right. explain to me what these different things add to the game and why they're different than, like, say, the red space... Well, I'm going to let you answer that because it's a bigger question than being specific. So, uh, with the case of the suits, the, the kind of broad design idea is that they are all base modifiers for your body. Uh, you probably saw our, uh, our big health post about the FPS module last week, and there was some mention of how you know you would need certain armors to carry certain things, and armor would modify you know how much damage your body takes at whatever point. Uh, the racing suits are the same, but they're also the opposite. Um, so they, they they're the suits that allow the most freedom of movement. The they provide the most protection from uh, zero g maneuver from uh, high g maneuvers. Um, and that that's what they're for, essentially. So some people look at things like, all right, you said that you were going to sell this only once. Why are you selling it again when I was the one that bought it early on? So these are two distinctive dis different racing suits, correct? Yes, yes. We, that, that, it turned out to be a pretty easy change to have one just be the Origin racing suit and one be the, uh, the uh, what was it, light speed. I forget, I forget what the original one yeah. was. So what would the environmental cloak that comes with the freelancer offer you? Um, well, in addition to being a Firefly reference, uh, which we thought was pretty cool. I mean, everybody <laughs> wants that. I mean, I'm sorry. I've never heard of Firefly, and I've never borrowed any of its intellectual property. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, it, it's also for uh, exploration, because you will travel to planets that aren't necessarily Earth type, there will be hostile atmospheres, um, all sorts of things once you get down on a planet to explore it. Uh, and the idea behind like an environmental code is it will provide protection to some of these environmental effects. Okay, that sounds great. Which also is how a real code works. So. I, I like it because it lets your character look like Mal if you're a guy, but maybe you could have something that makes you look more like Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've never heard of these characters. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's right. Ben has never watched Serenity or Firefly. I could <laughs> attest to that. Um, but you really did go running up after the people that look like Malcolm in the uh, Dragon Con that we went to. <laughs> um, next question has to do with the FPS module, which, again... To my viewers, this is something that is definitely not done set in stone. But what they're looking for is, will you be able to have something like uh, an alien, like the heartbeat sensor, be able to ping and see if somebody's behind a wall before you actually go around a corner and get shot? Yeah, we're, we're looking at all that stuff. Uh, and, but it will have to be in the game world. It has to be from that first-person perspective. Because we, we don't want that, oh, I'll just switch to my third camera look around the corner in a way that makes no sense. So it'll, it'll be, you know, a mirror and an eye for a scanner, uh, all sorts of options like that. Okay. So next question is, uh, well, first off, Ben, uh, you work a lot, so being able to play other games isn't always something you can do. Isn't that correct? Outside of your Nintendos and stuff. That is true, yeah. All right. So have you seen any, have you been able to take part in any playtesting for your own personal like of Elite Dangerous at all? I have. Well, I I took off and flew around very early on at one point, and that's been it. I, I think I, I backed for like the $500 uh, super pack, the one that gave Holy me all access, and then I never used it. Uh, wow. Well, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty bit um 
I'm supporting David as much as I'm supporting Chris at this time because I believe both of those games have to succeed because the genre, the genre as a whole has to succeed. And I need somebody to push Chris and somebody to push David to make them both better. So that's me getting my own thing out. So this is one of the questions that's asked. I so, should stress first. Uh, what? We feel the same way. We, okay. If you look back at our Kickstarter campaign, we, we plug Elite as much as we can. We, we want to see Space Sims come back. If, if Star Citizen is an amazing game, we still fail if it doesn't bring back Space Sims. And okay. we, we are super excited about Elite on the rare opportunities we have to play. <laughs> yeah, and I think that when you have somebody chasing your tail or when you're chasing someone's tail, it gives you a drive to be better. And in the absence of that, you pretty much have two cars that you could buy in the Soviet Union, you know? <laughs> Um, so in this case, this question has to do with the outside view. Now, we know that you can switch to an outside view at this particular time because the ships are gorgeous and you want to see them. The difference between Elite and Star Citizen is that in Elite, you can't get out of your ship and walk around it. But So people are always saying, why can't we see an outside view? So a, a, a very astute person brought this up. What good is having... What good is having somebody's trying to call me? I got to kill it. Sorry. Have no worries. It's Dr. Jeffrey, my new editor of research. Um, what good is having an outside view if you're trying to put all this work into trying to make yourself stealthy when somebody could just go to an outside view, swing around, and see what's behind the asteroid? Are you going to get rid of outside views in those situations? Um, I'm not entirely seeing. An outside view being used in that way in Star Citizen. Um, I mean, I'm thinking back to like the traditional Wing Commander cameras. You have the object camera where you can observe your ship, or you know, a kill camera when your missile hits the ship and it explodes. Right. Um, but I, I don't see a combat scenario where you're, you know, you're traveling at hundreds of kilometers per second and uh, you use the camera to sneak behind something. Uh, that's not what they're talking about. I think oh. I explained it incorrectly. So, and I don't have the right things here. So you have a ship, you have a ship behind an asteroid. You have this ship that's flying, looking for that ship, maybe a bounty hunter. If he goes to an outside view, he could swing his camera around and have it zoomed out enough to see this guy sitting behind the asteroid. In my opinion, Hey, we have UAVs today. This thing launched a UAV. It flew over here. It sees them. But an outside view does give you an, out, an opportunity to exploit a system that's giving this guy the opportunity to hide behind here in low emission like you guys are trying to do now. Is in, I think in action, that one won't work so well. Okay. Um, because when you, know, when you switch to an outside camera, you lose your HUD, you, you, you shut down your computer system, you just see the visual. Uh, in the case of searching for, for a ship like that, you're going to have a lot more luck using your various advanced scanners okay. to locate some other, other frequency. I mean, I think individually looking behind every asteroid that way, it, you're, you're also setting yourself a risk because you're no longer controlling your ship. You're, you're sitting there. We're waiting for ambush yourself. Uh, I think it's just going to be too fast-paced for that that to be that to matter like it would in FPS. Okay. So this next question is from a viewer that he probably doesn't watch Ten for the Chairman, but still I want to ask it because it gives you an opportunity to talk about some things that we probably won't see until after the PU goes live. So if you say you're in a freelancer or you're in a Hornet, whichever it might be, I would say this more or less is a two or three person ship. Your hull is breached and you sit down on a planet and there's no atmosphere. Are you going to model the um, a, a set amount of time that your oxygen inside of your suit will last. This person sounds like they've watched Gravity, you know. <laughs> uh, yes, we are. We are looking at that uh, specifically because uh, we all watch Gravity too. <laughs> yeah. So that that actually leads to another piece, which is that you will not be able to set down on an inhabitable planet or any planets for some time until the procedural generated the. How do you call that procedurally generated planet? Yeah. Until that system is in the game later on, isn't that correct? Uh, no, there'll, there'll be some interstitial steps where we will have kind of 
your base explorable planet with some area to look at. Uh, and uh, yeah, so th th there will be things for explorers to do before we, you know, create entire planets out of the out of the air. Uh, it's, it's for the procedural. It's more like we have a long term vision that we we know how cool this will be, uh, but there there will still be cool stuff before we get there. Okay. And uh, I think we only have two more left. So this one is a toss-up, and it's uh, so. <laughs> this person wants to know: Do you have any updates on what you're doing with the Herald design at this point? And the second part of their question is: Is it okay if they melt the Herald to take part in the anniversary sale? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. So, what do you have an update on the Herald design at this point? Uh, no, we have not locked down a particular design. It's possible we use both. It's possible we use neither. It's it's just still in that kind of last gasp of look dev where it could uh, could go any way. I say you use both and you make them two different variants, <laughs> two different two different missions. All right. So, my question, then the last question. Okay. All right. Okay. So my question. Okay, three hundred series. A while back, they said that they, well, somebody said, and I can't pull this out of anywhere, that there may be some kind of a redesign to the interior of the 300 series to make it more useful. Is that something that's going to be done anytime in the future? Uh, anytime, yes. Soon, no. I, I actually posted about this to the, uh, the new oh, concern awesome. forum last yeah. night. Um, it's one of those things that, yes, it will happen down the road, but... No, we don't have a technical artist to spare to do that right now. Um, we know there are a lot of improvements to make everywhere, uh, but right now our artists are focusing on getting all of the ships into the game. Uh, so in maybe six months, we, we take a look and we say, okay, uh, so-and-so has five days to spare to uh, update the 300. That will happen. Uh, but not not immediately. Yeah, I threw myself under the bus for that one, Ben, because a lot of people ask me that question, and I know what the answer of that is. There's more pressing things to do, and and we are asking for a lot of detail in each ship, are we not? I mean, even Chris, more so, but those of us that are buying the ships are adding to everything that Chris wants. So this is one of the things that I think. The ship is flyable. It works Let's work out the inside of it later when the game actually goes live and it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, last question has to do with... Okay, so let me ask you a question. How many times do you get questions about NPC character slots? Quite frequently. Okay. <laughs> so I am not... I, I didn't know if I should shy away from this one or not, but it comes from not only one of my backers financially, but one of my best and most loyal people that have been watching my show from the beginning. There seems to be so many answers to different um, questions about NPC character slots that it gets people a little bit confused. And what he's looking for is not to, so, not to lock down what is going to happen on day one, because we don't know what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. what exactly is the, um, is the policy on character slots right now? Right now, if I buy a package, there's a character slot in that package, correct? That's correct. So I can play as that character or a character slot from another ship, correct? That's right, yeah. We, we're working on a way to basically break up the packages, let people do as they please in that regard. All right. So do, are character slots locked to specific, like, are hangers locked to character slots or to user accounts? Uh, neither, really. We're, we're basically going to give you the option to say, if you have five packages, you will have five hangers, you'll have five character slots, you'll have five whatevers. Divide them as you wish. Okay. And also, they want to know, we know that there's no levels in this game at all. For us, the people that are playing the game, it's a skill-based game. But because characters are not live human beings, will one character, per se, be more skilled because I use them more often than a character I don't use at all? Mm -hmm. Sorry, repeat that one again. I, I know, I know, there. I know. So we're playing the game, and it's a skill-based game, so we're not uh -huh. leveling. We're getting better because we're learning how to play the game. Uh 
Yeah. But then we have our character slots. The more we play the game, well, say we play one character all the time. Will he get more proficient at doing the things I'm assigning him to do? Like, say I take a guy in my Super Hornet, and I always have him working the turret, and I always have him working the radar. And now I put another guy in there. Will the guy I've been using, all the character slot I've been using the whole time, be more proficient at that than the character I don't use that often? Yes, uh, to some degree. I, I don't know if it will be as granular as, okay, you've been having this guy do radar a lot, so he's an amazing radar guy. Um, but there is the idea that the skills of the NPCs improve over time with use, and also with a number of other factors, such as, uh, you know, injury, sickness, uh, right, and uh, payment also. So, you know, if you, if you have an NPC you've hired and you're giving him a living wage, he's going to do better than somebody who is flying because they have a gun to their head. Uh, so we're, we're creating a... So who has a gun to their head? The person that I own or the person that I go and I pay? Uh, the, the, the person you own, I could say. No, um, this is more for higher, hired NPCs. So All right. So. Okay. So the person I own is me, right? So Yeah. yeah. As, In terms of your NPC character size, you can switch between your... And, use. and I think Chris said it in one of the 10 for the chairman. Those people will have more skill than somebody that you'll get off of, like, the NPC hiring yeah, guild. Yeah. Okay. So that was almost done. This I, I hate three-part questions, Ben. I really do. That's okay. I really do. But I love this guy. Um, so if I level up each character... They think there's levels, but what actually they're doing is they're learning the skill at what you tell them. Can I, per se, have a Idris and have them skilled enough to operate that Idris just below a real-life character? I doubt that. I doubt it, too, just from a practical standpoint. It's a lot easier to say, hey, you... Buddy, uh, man, that gun over there. Than it is to say, okay, NPC, go over there and run that gun. It's, there's just there's a human element. I think we will never be able to simulate with the NPCs. Um, okay. I think that's correct, and that's why I think drones will never take over real live human beings. Um, no question. And I'm asking you one for me, and that's it. And this one's a very simple one. Okay. I. I I read all the lore, I read the com link like crazy, and I'm going through last night and reading what I think is either Will or David's post about the uh, Gladiator. Uh, and in there it says, it's the next hangar ready ship. That's right, I had to go to my post. And, uh, it was your, you wrote those? Wrote oh, amazing. Oh no, okay. I, 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 they, they did the vignettes. The yes, I thought, it. okay. So it is the next hangar ready ship. It is, um, we're, we're at least the schedule right now is that we'll have one patch before 1.0 and that that patch will include the uh, Gladiator hangar All right. ready. All right. So some people are saying that 1.0 is slipping. My point is that 1.0 is probably going to come out when you said it was before the end of the year. You never promised a date. Is that correct? We've not announced a date. It has not slipped as of right now anyway. All right. That's it, Ben. Thank you. And I will see you after the holiday. You and Alexis have a amazing Thanksgiving. Is it something that you guys are away from family, like really far at this point, because you're in California? Uh, well, my brother lives out here, so we're oh, going to have him over for Thanksgiving. Uh, it should be fun. All right, good. You enjoy. And I will talk to you next week if you're around. Absolutely. And you have a good Thanksgiving, too. Thank you very much.